This is Kim Ironman from Eco Beneficial here with Annie White, PhD student at the University of Vermont doing research on the attractiveness to pollinators of native species versus cultivars. And here we are in front of Anis hyssop. It's Agastache funiculum, a straight species plant, and um, there's a lot going on here in terms of pollinator activity. So Annie, talk a little bit about this plant and um, some things that you noticed about it. Yeah, this has really turned out to be one of the most attractive plants that I have in the garden for pollinators. And as you'll see today, it's just buzzing with pollinators. Um, and it attracts um, many different types. And you'll see both a lot of bumblebees on here and a lot of honeybees. Um, and I have a number of plants in the garden that seem to attract more of one or more of the other, but not both. So if you're um, looking to plant a flower that um, attracts everything, including the moths and the butterflies, um, this is a great one. This gets um, just a huge amount of action. Um, so this um, is a great midsummer. Um, flowering plant and um, has a wonderful smell to it. Um, it's one that I haven't used a lot in my own garden, but I think I will. This does um, self-seed um, quite prolifically, so that's something to keep in mind. And it's a square stem plant, meaning it's in the mint family. Um, but um, I think, you know, with a little pulling in your garden, it's it's really not a problem. I would not call it a thug, and I actually think it's mm -hmm. a fantastic plant, one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was used medicinally by colonists and American um, Native Americans as well. Um, I've actually had an Agastache tea. Have you ever mm. had the oh, occasion? It. It's pretty yeah. fantastic, uh -huh. very refreshing. Uh -huh. yep. So um, it's attracting a lot of generalist bees, as, as you've mentioned. Mm -hmm. And you've compared this plant to another um, Agastache. Mention that one. It's a cultivar. Yeah, so the cultivar that I compared this to is called Golden Jubilee. Uh, the big difference between the, the two plants is really in the color of the foliage. You can see that this has a, um, a more of a yellow hue or chartreuse, as we sometimes say in the design world, um, color to the leaf. Um, otherwise, the, the form of the flowers, the color of the flowers, um, actually the number of flowers per plant, which I do take counts of, um, uh, is really nearly identical to the, the straight species. So in terms of um, being attracted to pollinators, this one has performed just as well as the straight species. Just Not as well. As any differences. Mm -hmm. And in terms of growing it, was it equally easy to grow? Um, yes, it's been equally as easy to grow. Um, this one does also um, self-seed, so we know that it's not a sterile plant. Um, uh, it probably was just a selection for that, that leaf color, and it also has a similar bloom period. And just kind of a note on the self-seeding, um, so, sometimes people like me who love plants love the fact that plants show up when they're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. But there's another factor of this, and that is that a lot of birds love these seeds. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you're also interested in supporting um, songbirds, um, it's actually great to have a lot of things that reseed in the, in the mm -hmm. landscape. Watch more clips of Annie White's research on pollinators and native plants on the Eco Beneficial YouTube channel. This is Kim Ironman from Eco Beneficial. Thanks for watching. For more useful gardening tips to improve our environment, please visit us at www ecobeneficial.com